Hi, it is the Bacon Butty. I'm Josh Sexton. I'm joined by Ian Salmon once again in Brasco Lounge in Liverpool City Centre. Nice one to them, as always, for having us. And Ian, it's been it's been a lovely old weekend. Uh, yeah, you've been, been away on the Isle of Man. We've been here in Liverpool celebrating. I mean, what results-wise might just be a perfect weekend for Liverpool. It might be as perfect as possible. I mean, the whole weekend's been great. So I had a lovely <laughs> time on the Isle of Man Friday, Saturday. Got back yesterday. I went to see Bob Dylan at the arena last night. Oh, nice. Which was brilliant. Apart from the fact the first 25 minutes, people walking in front of me to try and find their, their seats <laughs> in the pitch black because they didn't believe in the idea that he actually starts at half seven. And we've, what you can't see from here is over your shoulder, there's this big ball pit, basically. But the ball's like 30 foot tall and it's glowing. So we walked through the River of Light last night, which was entertaining. Oh, awesome. But yeah, in terms of football, oh, well, Apart from between three o'clock and three fifty-five, it was as perfect today as you could possibly ask for. And this this was a bit I was, I was sort of keen to talk to you about. Really, was was the period between three o'clock and three fifty-five because, like in in the ground, I went down onto the concourse at half time, and there's, there's always that sort of concourse discourse, really, isn't there? When you when you go yeah. down with your mates and you and you're having a bit of a on, on the concourse at half time, and you know we me and my mates had a bit of an argument after the after the sort of after first half of the of the Chelsea game because my mates didn't believe that we played particularly well then and I think I probably still could name four or five lads who'd played well in, in that Chelsea game in, in the first half I mean against Brighton on Saturday well, Chelsea, I, Chelsea I thought I thought we played side. well but yeah. the first half they're, they're really really good side yeah. they're on the edge of becoming a really good side yeah. but in fairness so Brighton and the fact that Antonio Ariola has got them playing such good football would indicate that Richard Hughes is good at finding managers yeah. because he found him well, this is Herzler isn't it Herzler yeah. the Brighton manager Oh, is yeah, it? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. sorry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Born, born, sorry, born yeah. Areola, I, isn't it? I've been watching too many interviews with Areola over the weekend. <laughs> he um, is impressive right. to be fair. So, any time anybody wants to cut that bit out and just throw it away, is absolutely fine. <laughs> no, no, fine. Be, we'll, we'll go on to talk about Bournemouth beating City because that's obviously yeah. a, key, a key part of the weekend. But yeah, as Brighton, well, but Brighton are a really good, yeah. really good football and, team. And, and they, they, listen, you have to give them credit as well because they were so disruptive in, in that first half in a way that I didn't think they'd sort of. I didn't think they were they were particularly you know great as in they're not they're not better than Liverpool by no, any just stretch of imagination exactly. Yeah. And I, my worry was the worry we had two weeks ago. If you're going to play the same team twice in four days, you're going to lose one of them. Mm. Just law of averages, you're going to lose one. And it looked to me for that first half as if they'd looked at us in the Carabao and gone, well, that's the system. And you know that it's not the strongest team but that's the system yeah. that's the system they're going to play what do we do about the system and they take it as a chance to look at it and go okay we can get three points off them and they clearly believe that they could and they've seen ways to beat us and we could have easily been down three nil at half time and, and that's the thing Liverpool really played into the hands in that first half and I'm not sure how much that sort of comes across on on the TV and how much the I guess the, the, the sort of flatness of, of the atmosphere in, in response to that that comes with it because listen we're all we're all sort of sick of, of the atmosphere discourse and, and the way yeah. it's gone on this season but you know Neil writes really eloquently in, in his review yes. that, that there are two things that should go hand in hand really that you know the atmosphere is there when you need it when the team needs it but also if the team aren't giving anything for, for the crowd to, to feed off and in that first half they just they just weren't and I think you could feel that frustration building up and that's that's why you know when it does flip second half part of that is almost frustration with you know how bad the Reds have been for, for, for so much of that first 45 minutes so, well this is the weird thing for me because um because watching on the side obviously you've got that remove and it's 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 Australian broadcasting right and um, this, this is what we watched on I don't know how it turned yeah. up on the telly it was like magic it was just, <laughs> I walked in, I left the pub I walked into the house it was on the telly so I, I have no idea how that works and wouldn't care to speculate nope but it does straight away say the three o'clock black house is ridiculous because if I can watch Liverpool playing at home in the Isle of Man on a Saturday afternoon and the rest of the world can see it, why can't I watch Liverpool playing away at a three o'clock away kickoff that I can't get to because you can't get tickets? Yep. Because it's not stopping me going to see Marine, Tranmere. I can walk to Bootle. It's a 10 minute walk to Bootle, to the Dodge Stadium for yep. us. And I'm not going to because I want to see Liverpool play. So if I can't find a dodgy stream somewhere, dear Sky, charge me five pounds to watch that show. I'll, I'll pay you five pounds to watch that game. No problem at all. And a lot of people will do it. And it's good economics and it's good business. So, you know, end of that. Um, I came out afterwards and people were talking about the atmosphere in the second half. I felt like the atmosphere was good, but everyone kept using the word feral. You couldn't tell it was feral. So I think half, really? this, half this discourse, you can tell it went up and obviously yeah. went up around the goals and it goes, you can tell it's gone off. But the difference between watching it go off and being in it go off is 
it's, it's just it's, it's exponential it's just ridiculous and so people are talking about feral it's kind of like maybe this is why the discourse comes up because you can't sell on telly what the atmosphere is like because we're never going to be a European team we are not going to be a team where we have conductors stood at the front of the car conducting the crowd yeah. one find me two lads who don't want to watch the game yeah. who are in there two if anybody ever brings a drum into Anfield <laughs> somebody will be having words with them that's wool behaviour so we, we don't want that here's a song here's a song here's a song here's a song I'd like to return to every player having a song before the kickoff, but after that you react to what's in front of you so my reaction was this is one of the worst halves of football I've ever seen. So another glass of wine, thank you very much. <laughs> and I, I wasn't moving from the couch. So there's no on your feet. There's no the jeopardy is not the same. Despite the fact you're looking at going, we should be three 0 down. Yeah. And you know, there's there's a really good save from Kelleher, and there's the the one that um, Kadioglu puts over the bar. Mm. So there's those moments, and you know we've got away with it. But the thing. The thing you really don't see is you don't see the shape. So I couldn't see how they're getting through us because you're not seeing the shape of the passing lanes. So I'm normally main stand, row 18, 209, just up at the cop end. So if anybody wants to come and tap me on the shoulder, do so by all means. <laughs> uh, I've got, I know what the shape of the match looks like to me. I can tell what we're doing in each game by how it looks to the previous game. You can't tell it on the celly. And the fit, I walked in, it looked like they got the cameras on the wrong side of the ground. I couldn't figure out what was going on. <laughs> they were where they always, always are, but it looked so wrong. Yeah. And then you come out the second half, and you could tell the difference right away, just from the movements of the team. Even on celly, you could tell the difference. So I don't know how that looked in the, set, in, in the ground, but I think the fact that Joe Gomez has a header on target, after 20 seconds of the second half, I think that sets everything up after that. Because that's, that's nearly Joe's first professional goal, and God knows that lad deserved it.